Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning about redox reactions. It's... Welcome back. It's time to talk about redox reactions. Alright, so what exactly is redox? Well, for starters, redox is short for reduction oxidation. So one thing to really understand is that reduction and oxidation are two separate reactions that occur at the same time. It is impossible to have one without the other. You know, it's like Bonnie and Clyde, you know, Abbott and Costello, Pinky and the Brain, like Kanye West and his ego. I mean, you just cannot have one without the other. They always occur at the same time. Okay, so that being said, let's take a look at each one individually. Let's start with oxidation. So oxidation um, is a reaction that is generally not favorable. It's not really something that we like. You know, some examples are um, like you take a bite out of an apple and you leave it on the table and you notice how it like, you know, turns brown after a while. Well, that's because the apple is oxidizing uh, from the oxygen in the air and turning brown. Um, anytime you see anything rusting, right? So you get a, like a, um, an iron lock, right? And it rusts over time. That is oxidation. You familiar with the, uh, the Statue of Liberty? Hey, did you know that the Statue of Liberty is actually made out of copper, right? So then why is it not copper colored? Because the copper has oxidized over time and turned green. It's that simple. Okay, now on the other hand, reduction, reduction is a reaction that we do like. In fact, reduction is also called purification. All right, so anytime uh, we're trying to get metal out of the earth and to purify that metal, we have to reduce that metal, okay? So oxidation, not something that we like. Reduction is something that we like but they happen at the same time. So the trick is to figure out what you want to be reduced and then what is okay to sacrifice as, uh, as something that can be oxidized. All right, here's another example for you to think of. You know how every time you go to the grocery store and you're looking around at some of the different foods that you wanna take off the shelf and on a lot of them they have this big fancy word on the side that says full of antioxidants. Right? Well, that's because an antioxidant is something that prevents oxidation. Because some of the foods that we eat, the, the substances go into our bodies and those chemicals will actually oxidize our body cells, which is something that we don't want. So we eat these other foods that are basically sacrificial lambs, if you will, and they become oxidized instead of our body cells. Right, so foods that are rich in antioxidants are good because it prevents the oxidation of your body. My favorite being dark chocolate. Mmm, yes. Actually one of the best sources of uh, antioxidants that you can find. Dark chocolate. It rocks. Alright, so that being said, now let's start talking about what does redox really mean in terms of chemistry and what you would have to actually show your teacher, okay? Well, you guys all familiar with, uh, with an oil rig? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just, just like that, okay? An oil rig right there, but I don't mean the actual picture, I mean the word. Yeah, like that, okay? So the word oil rig is going to help us remember what oxidation and reduction actually does. So let's start with the first part of the word, which is oil, right? So O-I-L stands for oxidation is losing electrons, which means that the charge is increasing. It's going up. Reduction, on the other hand, is the rig part. Reduction is gaining electrons, which means that the charge is decreasing and going down. Now, how do we take that and apply it to an actual redox reaction so that we can identify what is oxidized and what is reduced? Well, I'm glad you asked, and that is the topic for the next video. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Side your mind.